Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University. And in this video, I'm going to go over three additional practice problems in alcohol nomenclature. I want to highlight uh, examples that include additional functional groups or otherwise are more complex than the ones I did in my previous video. So here is the first one. This structure has an alkyne in it as well. Okay? And so we have to figure out how to handle that part of the nomenclature. And that might also complicate how we want to number the structure. Because now we have two different functional groups in the, in the structure that might control the way we number the parent chain. So the first thing that we still need to do, we still need to do one, is identify the parent chain. Okay. And in this case, there's one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms in the parent chain. And I'm just going to write down hexane at the moment. I know that that's going to change. The next thing we need to do is identify the priority functional group. So the functional group that is going to have the, the priority as far as the, uh, the numbering goes. And <clears throat> the IUPAC established a series of rules and alcohol has higher priority than alkyne. And so that means we can number the structure so that the alcohol gets the lowest the lower possible numbers, which means we're going to number it 1, 2, alcohol is going to be at carbon atom 3, and the alkyne starts at carbon 4 and goes to, or starts at carbon 5. Our third thing that we need to do, we've, we've done the numbering, we've added our locants. Number 4, we need to change the suffix of our name. Okay, so the alcohol has a higher priority. It changes the suffix from hexane to hexanol. And, and we're going to deal with the three in a moment. Right, without the alkyne functional group, we could call this three hexanol and be done. But how do I handle that alkyne? It's not a substituent, it's in the parent chain. Okay, so let's... If you've watched my video series on naming alkynes, you know that alkynes affect the infix of the name. So right, That means that we are changing the an part of the name to ein for alkynes. It's not actually the the suffix of the name, it's the, the infix of the name. And so we're changing this from a hexanol to a hexinol. And our final thing we're going to do is add numbers to the name. Okay. Where do we put these numbers? We can't just put them all up at the beginning. Like We can't just have like 3,5 hexinol. I don't know what that means. I don't know which functional group the 3 goes with, and I don't know which functional group the 5 goes with. If you've watched some of the other nomenclature videos, you know that there is a separate, there is a different way of putting numbers and names that puts the numbers right in front of the part of the name they go with. Right. And so we can call this thing, even though it is cumbersome, hex 5 i 3 all. And then the last thing that we need to do is put in the stereochemistry. And this molecule has S stereochemistry at carbon 3. If you really felt like you needed to have the, the 3 at the S because they're multiple chirality centers, you, you could absolutely do that. Right now there's only one chirality center. I'm actually going to leave that 3 in front of the, the name. Alright, we'll just leave the 3 off. So this is S hex 5 ion 3 all. Right. 
in the second structure, we it's a cyclic structure. Uh, it's got an alkene. It's got some other substituents in it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my rules down here, but we have an extra step to do because we have a chlorine substituent. And we'll deal with that in a moment. So we, first we identify the parent chain. This is a cyclic molecule and it's cyclopentane originally. The alcohol is a higher priority functional group than the alkene. So we're going to change, we're going to focus on that. And we need to add the locants. Now, however, there are two possible ways we can imagine numbering around the ring. I can number clockwise. Right? And that gets the first alkene carbon at 3 and the chlorine at 4. Okay. Or I could number counterclockwise. I'm going to keep this numbering scheme and I'm going to, going to make a copy of the structure. I could number counterclockwise, so that would swap 2 and 5 and swap 3 and 4. Oops. There we go. And it's actually, so let's look at these two structures. One of these structures is better because it has the lowest overall possible combination of locants, and it's the second one that I it's the second one that I marked up here. Because this one has I forgot. This one has the chlorine at three, the alkene at three, and the alcohol at one. So I actually want to use this one and not the, the original one that I did. Okay. Lowest possible combination of locants. We need to change our suffix to cyclopentanol. We need to change our infix, not from to, to Y-N, but to E-N for the alkene. We need to add the numbers to the name so we can show where the locants are. And so I'm going to put in 1-all and 3-ene. And we have one more thing to do. And that's to add the substituents to the name. And this is a molecule, oh, and we have, this is 3-chloro, cyclopent 3-ene-1-all, and this is a molecule with stereochemistry, so we have to, to put in the stereochemical descriptor at carbon 1, and this one is also S, and if you, you can take, pause the video and, and spend a moment convincing yourself that that's correct if you need to. In my final structure, I've got uh, another cyclic molecule, no other functional group, but there are two alcohols here. And so I want to do another more complex diol. All right, so here, we do not need to do step five because we don't have... Uh, we don't have an infix that we need to change. There's no functional group here that's going to change the infix. All right. All right. And, and we really, we don't need to do step two because the only other functional group besides hydrocarbons are, are, are alcohols. But, but we do need to identify the parent chain, and in this case we have something that began, you know, without, a, without any substituents on it would have been a cyclohexane. We need to add our locants, and we want to add our locants so we get the lowest possible combination of numbers. And that, that means I'm going to go clockwise here so that the alcohols are at 1 and 3. The ethyl group is at 4. Probably didn't need to put in 5 and 6, but I'm going to do it for completion. All right. We change the suffix not from E to all, but from E to diol, because this is a cyclohexane diol, actually. Oof. Actually, the E stays. Let's go. Let's go back up here. The E stays, uh, and the E stays just for the, the sake of pronunciation. So instead of saying cyclohexandiol, it's a little, it's a little easier to pronounce hexane diol. Uh, we need to add the numbers, uh, and again, I could put one three cyclohexane diol, right? and then we need to add the substituent for ethyl. 1,3-cyclohexane diol, but it's perfectly acceptable to write 4-ethyl cyclohexane 1,3 diol. And there are a lot of chemists out there that prefer the second way because it, it is more explicit about where the two alcohol functional groups are. And then the final thing that we need to do is to put the stereochemical descriptors at the front, and it is R at carbon 1, and... We 
it is going to be S at carbon 3. And I'm doing this quickly, so I am going to double check since I'm in software that can do this quickly for me. I'm going to double check my, myself because this one is a little bit more complicated and I am feeling, um, feeling a little bit self-conscious for doing it so fast. Oh, and it's a good thing that I did this because I forgot the stereochemistry of carbon-4, which is R. Again, your instructors are human beings who make mistakes. And I am a human being who makes mistakes. So, 4R, 1R, 3S, 4R, 4-ethyl, 1,3-cyclohexane diol. This is within your power. As molecules get more complex, we just follow the rules in order and build the name sequentially until we get to the final thing. And, and the reality is, of course, as, as time goes on, the software that generates names automatically gets better and better. So my software that I'm using here could generate an IUPAC name for this structure. And there it is. 1R3S, 4R, 4-ethyl, 1,3-cyclohexane diol. The same thing we got. And it's always good to be able to check yourself if you can. Thank you for watching.